Welcome to the Organic Chemistry Podcast, Dr. Brian Lloyd's Scribblecast of Organic Chemistry Lectures and Solutions to Homework Problems. The problem you see before you, name the following organic molecules, was given as a handout sheet at the end of the coverage of the IUPAC nomenclature section of the course. And this very, very large molecule was one of the molecules given to you uh, to name. Now, since the question states name the following organic molecules, either IUPAC or common nomenclature uh, solutions for these structures are acceptable. So in some cases, I will be giving you two names. What we have here is a very large alkane. And in this structure, there are no high priority groups that we need be concerned with. All of the groups off of the chain are low priority substituent groups. And so all you have to do is look for the largest chain. If there is an identically large chain, you have to find the one with the most substituents. So we can begin counting and we can start here, for example, and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We can count over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Or we can go here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've found a chain with 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's beginning to look like this long 12 carbon chain represents the longest chain. Now, I can immediately ask, where do I start numbering? If here is one end of the 12 carbon chain and here is the other end, where do I start numbering from? Well, you always number to give the lowest number to the first substituent. If I number from this end, I hit 1, 2, I hit a fluorine, a carbon 2. If I number from this end, I hit 1, 2, an iodine, a carbon 2. So they're tied. So you continue out. Next, 1, 2, 3, I hit two iodines at carbon 3. From this end, 1, 2, 3, I only hit a fluorine at carbon 3. So the second iodine at carbon 3 is the first point of difference. And so this end is where I will start numbering chain. So let's number the chain. I'm going to number it in red so it stands out because the chain is so large. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what we have here is a 12 carbon alkane. The 12-carbon alkane is called a dodecane. Dodecane. Okay, now we have a lot of substituents to name. Let's start with at carbon 2 I have a fluorine. Are there any other fluorines anywhere along the chain? Yes, there is. There's another one at carbon 10. So it looks like I have a 2,10-difluoral. Okay. At carbon 3, I have two iodines. Are there any other iodines anywhere along this chain? I scroll down along the chain, checking, checking, and there's an iodine at 11. So it looks like I have a 3, 3, 11 try iodo try iodo proceeding out there's a four nitro do we see a nitro group anywhere else just perusing quickly i don't we have a four nitro At 5, what is the group at 5? At carbon 5, I have the CH3, CH, CH2, CH3. That is a sec butyl group. So at carbon 5, I have a sec butyl. At 
carbon six. We're going to come back to carbon six in a moment. At carbon seven, I have a CH2 with the CH3, CH3C. That looks like a neopental at seven. Neo's not hyphenated. Neopental. And at seven also, there's a methyl. There's an eight methyl. So we see a seven, eight dimethyl. I haven't missed any. So we have a 7,8 dimethyl. Off of carbon 8, there is this isobutyl group. Lots of substituents. Off of carbon 9 is a terp butyl. Hmm. We've already done 10, 11. Now, at carbon 6, we have this big chain, which I'm going to number in green, because it's a side chain. And there's no common name for it. This side chain has no common name, so I've got to use an IUPAC method, which says from the point of attachment to the main chain, count to the longest carbon chain, 1, 2, 3. And then you can name it. And so it looks like we have, wow, a 1-1-2-2 tetramethyl propyl. That's a big name. We're running out of room here. So let's put it down here. Um, let's rub out the question. Let's write that along the top. Okay, so what we see here in the green is a one. Oh, let's give some more room. So we've got one, one, two, two, tetra, methyl, propyl. Now, I've already stated for alphabetizing of groups put in brackets, I will not be picking what you use. I typically would use the P of propyl, but if you chose to use the T at the beginning, I will turn a blind eye to that. I have been unable to confirm under IUPAC rules, which is the proper methodology for alphabetizing these groups. Nevertheless, <coughs> uh, this is found at carbon-6. Let's look at what we alphabetize. Starting at the top, the di is not used. We use the F, the I, the N, the B, the N of Neo, it's not hyphenate, M, B, oh, the I, and the B. And just between the tert butyl and sec butyl, you use the second tert to find out their order relative to each other. Here, I'll allow you to use anything. I would use the propyl because that is what it is for alphabetizing and I will insert it there appropriately. So, if I was to go through this, and looking, 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 I, F, we've got some Bs, we got a sec butyl and a terp butyl, so I'm going to write in black the order that these will be written in. It looks like QRST, sec butyl's one, Terp butyls two, and then after the B's, probably the F is three. E F G H I. Now we got iodo and iso. Okay, so O will beat the S, so this will be four. Then we have the iso. The I of iso is five. And then we've got M's and N's. It looks like so um, it looks like the methyl 6 the M methyl and now we've got nitro 
and Neo. Neo 7, because the NE, nitros 8, and the P will be 9. So if I start adding these groups, I'm going to start backwards adding them on to delta K. So we're going to have this big one. Looks like 6 bracket 1, 1, 2, 2, tetra. Probably didn't leave enough room. Methyl. Ah, squeeze it in. Oh, I can't squeeze that in. We'll rub out dodecane, make it smaller. Tetramethylpropyl. Bracket do deck ain dodecane. Okay, so six one one two two tetramethylpropyl. Then the eighth one is the four nitro. Seven is seven neopental. I don't know if I can fit that in there. I'll try neo pental will not fit. Let's try it. We'll squeeze the nitro in. Neo pental and four nitro. So there we go. We have a seven neo pental. Uh, Neopento was 7, we've done the 8, we're down the 6, so we've got a 7, 8, seven, eight di methyl, uh, group 5, 8 isobutyl, So we have an 8 isobutyl, 7 8 dimethyl. Should be a hyphen there. Isobutyl is 5, 4 is 3 3 11 triodo. So we've got this 3 3 11 triodo. And then. Um, 3 is 210 difluoro. Hmm. A little more room would be nice. Difluoro. Okay, 210 difluoro. Uh, 2, number 2 is a 9 terbutyl. And then after 9 terbutyl, we have a 5 sec butyl. 5 sec butyl. And so, notice if you had used the T of tetra in this large group, it would have come in the same spot. So if I was to go through this, I see a 5 sec tubutyl, 9 terbutyl, 210 difluoral, 3 3 11 triiodyl, 8 isobutyl, 7 8 dimethyl, 7 neopental, 4 nitro, 6 hyphen bracket, 1 1 2 2 tetramethylpropyl bracket, dodecane. This was certainly a very large molecule just to test your abilities for naming all of, or many of, the common names for substituents and the methodology of alphabetizing to get the order, and the ability to search out and find the longest carbon chain. This certainly would be considered a very challenging question. It should not be taken lightly. The likelihood of getting such a question on the quiz is low simply because of the amount of time it would take for you to do it on a quiz. Nevertheless, um, a challenging question could sometimes be useful in increasing your abilities at doing nomenclature problems. 
Let's look at some of the other questions that you had to provide names for, and they were a little less difficult. The next structure you were given had a cyclic six-membered ring attached to a nitrogen. And off of that nitrogen, there were two CH2-CH3 groups. So here's one, and here's the other. Now, the longest carbon chain with the highest priority group on it, in this case, is the six-membered ring. The six-membered ring is called a cyclohexane. For the functional group amine, you drop the E and add amine. So in IUPAC, you would call this a cyclohexanamine. Cyclohexanamine. Oops. So cyclohexanamine. Now, the two groups off of the nitrogen are ethyls, so we have diethyl, and how do you designate that they are attached to the nitrogen? You use capital N, comma, capital N, and a hyphen. So this is NN diethyl cyclohexanamine, and it's all one word, there are no spaces. The common name would name the largest alkyl, uh, the largest organic chain, as an alkyl group of the nitrogen. So instead of cyclohexanamine, we would have a cyclohexylamine. Cyclohexylamine. And then again, we'd also have the NN diethyl. and then diethyl cyclohexylamine. Since you're not asked to give either IUPAC or common, it just says name the following organic molecules, either of these names would have been acceptable. The next molecule is a five-membered ring with several double bonds in it. We also have two methyls off of this ring. Now, when naming a cyclic ring, you look at the derivative name of the cyclic ring. In this case, we have a five-membered ring. It's a cyclopentane. With a double bond, it becomes a cyclopentene. With two double bonds, it becomes a cyclopentadiene. So let's just write that up here for reference. We have a cyclopentadiene. Now, we have to determine how we're going to number this ring and where those dienes are located, okay? So cyclopentadiene, and let's play around with some of the numberings that are possible. First off, can I number this way? One, two, three. Can I go from 1 to 2 to 3? I'm getting the smallest numbering system. I've got a 1,3-diene and 1,3-dimethyls. No, you're not allowed to number that way. If you were to pick this carbon as number 1 right here, because it's a carbon that has a double bond, number 2 must be the other end of the double bond. In other words, when numbering, Whatever number you give the first atom of the double bond, the very next number must proceed through the double bond. And so if I'm numbering around the ring, I get one, two, three, four. Notice if I started here, in this position, I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five. And that would lead to larger numbers for my double bonds. And again, since the alkene is the highest priority, I'm going to try to give the double bonds the lowest possible number. In this case, you see we have a 1 and a 3 position for the double bonds. And so, if I am to properly name this molecule, I have a cyclopenta 
one three die a cyclopenta one three dying and then off of it I have a one four dimethyl So a 1,4-dimethyl cyclopenta 1,3-diene. Now, I'll just point out, I will accept, you know, the 1,3 out front. If you had said 1,4-dimethyl 1,3-cyclopenta diene, although that's less favored by IUPAC, it would be acceptable. Let's go on to the next molecule. We have a double bond O attached to a ring. Fairly large ring, it looks like. So as I draw this, so if I put dots where the carbons are, Looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbon ring system. Double bonds located here and here. Off of this position is an OH. Off of here is an OH. And off of here, we have a CH2, a C, with several CH3s. Okay. Well, the longest carbon chain with the highest priority group. Who's higher priority, the OH or the C double bond O? If you said the C double bond O, you are correct. What kind of functional group is that? That is a ketone. The ketone is highest priority and will start out with the lowest number, which on a ring is number one. So he is number one. Now, this molecule is symmetrical, so it won't matter where I go around the ring, which way. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the longest carbon chain, or in this case ring, with the highest priority group is an 8-carbon ring. An 8-carbon ring is a cyclooctane. A cyclooctane. With a ketone on it, it is a cyclooctanone. With an alkene, that becomes a cyclooctenone. With two alkenes, it becomes a cyclooctanone dienone. And now let's ask where the enes are. Cyclooctane. Well, the enes are located at 27. So we have a 27 diene and I can say 1 ohm or I could have just said cyclo Oops, I missed my O. Mm, that's bad. Watch your spelling. There are two O's. There's a cyclo, an O for cyclo, and an O for octa. Cyclo, octa, two, seven, diene, ohm. Why don't I need the one? I don't need the one because it's the own is highest priority. And so no matter where I put it on the ring, I would start with it as one. But it is not wrong to put the one in, so if you feel necessary, include the one. It's perfectly fine. Now we see we have at 4, 6 a dihydroxy. So at 4, 6 we have a dihydroxy. And at 5 we have a neopental.
Well, for alphabetizing, we use the H and the N. The N, the H comes first, so I can put a 5 neo pento in front of this. 5 neo pento. And there is patches making noise. 5 neo pento. And a 4 6 dihydroxy. 4 6 dihydroxy. 5 neopento cycloocta 27 dienone. 4 6 dihydroxy. 5 neopento cycloocta 27 diene. And uh, remember on the ring, be careful with those owns. If there's any doubt and you feel you have to put the one in, don't hesitate. Put it in when in doubt. You will not be wrong. Okay, the last molecule to name has a aromatic ring, a benzene-like ring, attached to a carbon-carbon double bond. That is attached to a C double bond O, which has a oxygen off of it. And attached to the oxygen is a CH. Off of the CH is a methyl and an ethyl. And so you have this molecule. Immediately, if you look at this molecule, you will immediately realize that this is an ester functional group. And if asked to name esters, you always search for the carboxylic acid derivative upon which the ester is based. If I draw that down here, replace the alkyl group with the OH, I'll get this. This wonderful molecule we need to give an IUPAC name for it. Interesting, this molecule you have not had its common name, but it's called cinnamic acid based on cinnamaldehyde. And the IUPAC name for this molecule is to find the longest carbon chain with the highest priority group off of it. Longest carbon chain is one two, three. A three carbon chain with a carboxylic acid is a propane. We drop the E and you add oic acid. Except there is this ene at carbon two. So we have a pro two ene one oic. Well, we don't need the one, so I'll leave it out. Oic acid. The substituent of carbon-3 is a 3-phenyl. So this is a 3-phenyl prop-2-enoic acid. Drop the ic acid and add 8. If you do that, you end up with as your root name for your ester 3-phenyl prop. 2-ene-O-8. Now we just have to name this group. Do you recognize the common name of the substituent? That's right. It's sec-butyl. So this is sec-butyl, 3-phenylprop, 2-ene-O-8, two words, sec-butyl separated by a space. All right. Thank you very much.